Good morning. I need to start by saying I'm going to get a little ugly on this one. We've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, those wonderful traits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and to those things we all say, yeah, that's wonderful, that's good, I want to do that. And then we get to the last one, the hard one, the demanding one, self-control. It's really as simple and as complex as that. God's wanting us to do something. He wants us to be in control of self. He wants us to demonstrate that control. There is a branch of theology that that denies that humans have any say in the way that their lives go. It's referred to as determinism. The idea that everything that we do is predetermined and thus in reality out of our control. And there would be some that in supporting that idea would point to verses like we would find in Romans chapter 8 that actually use the word uh, predestination and thus when you look at that verse out of the context of everything else it makes sense to draw the conclusion that things are really out of our control if something is predetermined then we might say that it's written in stone it's already established nothing can change it especially if it is predetermined by God if it's predestined by God but when we look at that when we draw the conclusion that there are things that are out of our control, that we really don't have control over our life, in, in the theological world we would refer to that as we, we don't have free will. If we hold to that, there are other passages that simply don't make much sense. Why are there passages that tell us to repent? Why are there books that enforce the concept of obedience to God. Why so much instruction about doing the will of God? If everything is predestined, then those passages really don't make sense. Everything is already written in stone. It doesn't matter what we decide to do. Everything is already established. However, let's take another look at that. What if those verses that mention predestination are simply saying, Every person is designed to progress to the destination of God. Then it begins to make more sense. We are designed to do the will of God. We are predestined to be people of righteousness. That doesn't mean that something cannot get in the way. And indeed, sin has gotten in the way. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When we look at predestination in that sense, that it is, the, it is the plan of God that we do these things and not the reinforced, already established behaviors that we experience every day, it, it really makes more sense. It, it begins to make all the difference in the world, really, about our attitude towards who we are and what we are to be in the eyes of God. This idea of seeing that it is God's pre-planned idea that we would be obedient, it allows for the verses and the books and the passages encouraging obedience to fit into an instruction that we can all understand that really makes sense in our own minds. So, what does self-control really mean? It means that we have been given the power and the authority by God to be in control of our lives. Clear back in Genesis chapter 1, after God has created the heavens and the earth, created all the animals, all the plants, everything, and created then Adam and Eve, he then speaks to Adam and Eve and he says, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. We easily understand that God is the sovereign power over all creation. But this passage seems to be telling us that God has passed on some of that authority 
to people so that they can be in control of the earth and of their own lives and even of the unfolding story of humankind on the earth. I refer to this as shared sovereignty. It is by God's plan that he has entrusted to us the amazing ability to be in charge of us. He's given us the ability to be in charge of what we do as individuals and what we do even as a people working together. It means that whatever happens on the earth, we at least have some control over it. Now, granted, there are some things over which we do not have control. Floods and hurricanes and tornadoes and I might insert here pandemics. There are some things we don't have control over, but how we react to those things is within our authority. It is within our control. It means that we may not know the future yet because the future has not yet been written. It is in our hands. Now, I know there would be some that would point back at biblical prophecy and the fact that God gave insight to individuals to know some things that were going to happen in the future. I certainly allow for that. And in God's great plan, there are some things that he established that must take place. He established long before Jesus came that Jesus would come. He established that Jesus' life would end on a cross. He established that Jesus would ultimately be victorious. Those things were pre-planned and set in motion so that the good of all humankind could benefit from that. But nevertheless, it still leaves within our hands a lot that has not yet been written. It is truly in our hands, and we have control. Self-control means the application of discipline. Discipline in our own lives, and thus we are disciples. A disciple without discipline is not a disciple. It means that we do what is right in the sight of God rather than what is easiest and what may, may be the most desirable for us individually. Self-control means doing the better thing rather than the easiest thing. It means that we are willing to practice. Here's a hard one. It means that we are willing to practice delayed gratification putting off our own reward for our behaviors until the good of our behavior can bear fruit. Sometimes that delay may even extend past the end of our earthly life and into eternity. Delayed gratification is the practice that indicates real maturity in our lives. Self -gratific or, uh, delayed gratification here uh, gives us purpose and peace and makes us actually more productive. But delayed gratification comes only with self-control. Self-control can be applied in many, many ways. For us, it starts with controlling our time, controlling our mouths, look at the book of James, controlling our minds, controlling our moods, God has put that within our hands. We are not manipulated by the world in being in a certain mood. We are not manipulated by anything that goes on in the way that we apply our lives and our efforts and our time and our speech and, and, and the way that we think. These things have been placed within our control because of God's desire for us to honestly be decision makers, working towards his will. For us as Christians, we apply this to our prayer life. We apply it to our Bible reading. We apply it to the way that we care for other people. So, Christian, let this be an encouragement for you to practice self-control because self-control is the mark of real spiritual maturity.